Let me get Honorable Suhini to make his contribution. Well, um, thank you very much. Um, I think that for some of us who even are considered old broadcasters, I will invite you know those that we are older, we are also older than, to join me to give a round of applause to our <laughs> veterans here for making it possible for us to have a job. And I'll start on the note that freedom, we are told, in whatever form, is not granted. Freedom is not given. It's taken. And so we have to understand that in the discussion of press freedom and the need for the press to be free, there is an underlining fact that it is not in the interest of somebody or some institution for the media to have unfettered freedom. And so you are going to have opposition in the expression of that freedom. And that is why I think it is important that we celebrate those who charted and created this path for us. Because reference has been made already to the culture of silence. And they defied that. And they made sure that they fought whatever obstacle was on their way, using whatever resources that they had at the time. And so we have come a long way from the time where there were little cautions. It was about breaking the barrier. And I have spoken to some of our seniors. And trust me, some of the issues that they published for which they came into conflict with the state, they are not proud of today. They are not proud that they published those things that led to conflict with the state. But that conflict led to the expansions that we are enjoying today, the expansions of the freedoms that we are enjoying today. And so we have to understand that we are blessed that at this point, it is not about getting the freedom at all costs. It is now about regulating the freedom that we have and using that for nation building. But what I find intriguing is the topic for which we are guarded. It says public interest and it says national interest, as if the two are not the same. For me, the, pub the national interest is the public interest. And so anybody who is in charge or who is operating in the media house and anybody who is in charge or operating in national security will have the same interest, which is the national interest, which I assume is the public interest. But why do we perhaps have a situation where we have to categorize national interest, I mean, uh, 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 national interest separately from public interest? It is because of what I believe Mr. K.B. Quanson, a known you know, uh, a security analyst, former national security advisor, has said in many of his writings about the need for us to differentiate between regime security and state security. We have confused that for a very long time. And so when you have the national institutions under the Intelligence Act, being abused in protecting regime security. Then you will have, for example, some of the cases that my brother uh, in charge of uh, the coalition spoke about earlier, where you will have, for example, journalists being picked up because they have done a story against somebody in national security. I mean, how is that our interest? If I write that the national security officer has done something, and we have spoken about the criminal libel law, and how the movement around you know, the repeal of it came about. But let's not forget that we didn't repeal the civil libel law. There was a reason why I'm sure journalists at the time only advocated for the repeal of the criminal libel law. Because we knew that even in the practice of journalism, people were going to perhaps overstep their boundaries. And so if they did, for example, in the case of the national security officer, he is entitled to sue under the civil libel law. It is not 
for him to use that opportunity that he has as a national security officer to take the whole national security that you and I are supposed are expecting to protect our interests to carry out this charge. And maybe I'll just wrap up by uh, uh, touching on the need for us to be fair as journalists and also to be truthful. But let's not also forget about the fact that we are also told that truth comes in various forms. Whose truth are we reporting? My truth, your truth is truth. So even when you are convinced that you are reporting the truth, there's a need for you to know that in this business of you know, relaying information, it's like dealing with a description of an elephant. You only can report as far as you can see. And so based on what you have gathered, if you are convinced at that time that this is your truth, be courageous to report it, but also be mindful to be fair to other people who may have other versions of that story to tell. It is only for you to give opportunity to that person and allow listeners to judge and perhaps even interrogate to establish what really the truth is. But sometimes I see, and this is a criticism for those of us in journalism, that based on what we have gathered, we conclude that this is our truth and that is final. And so we become very arrogant about our position and get close-minded and do not allow for you know, other views to also perhaps contest with what we have gathered. And maybe that is what we need to take note of. That what we have, especially for those of us who practice in radio, is just a microphone and not a gun. And so if you uh, point your microphone at uh, anybody in office, it does not mean the person should just raise his hand and say nothing because you are a journalist. You need to understand that they also have the right to tell you their side of the story. And it is for you to interrogate and find out if uh, what they are saying is truthful or not. Finally, a question to the panelists. A question. My brother raised an issue regarding the closure of some radio stations. I've seen a report by the Freedom House International. Now, the Freedom House International have stated that one of the biggest risks to broadcasting today around the world is licensing, censorship, and authorization. It's no longer the brute force that Madame Elizabeth, Elizabeth Evini and Ibo uh, and others had to suffer. That around the world, what governments, democratic governments, are using today to stifle media freedom is authorization, licensing, and, 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 and do, you know, those protocols. As a country, given the examples that we all see around us, is it time for us to discuss how it is possible for in the name of regime security and not national security, for the state to use this authorization to limit media freedoms in our current dispensation. And how can we go around it? Thank you. I'm grateful for that.